Hi everyone, welcome back for a hummingbird update. Got a lot to talk about today. I've been really busy in the last uh, week or so since the last update, burning a lot of midnight oil, getting up early. Home stretch, you know, 90% done, 90% to go, but I'm starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel and getting pretty excited here. So anyway, those of you who may have seen the earlier video uh, this afternoon we did know that I have brake fluid now in the brakes on the hummingbird. We've got those pumped up, no leaks, parking brake works, both brake pedals work. So that's exciting. If you look over this way, the engine installation and actually the whole engine compartment now is complete. I think the last time I talked a little bit about the cabin heat, I see what you're showing there. So if you look up in here, you'll see the, the fan, no propeller, right? So we've got a fan blade here with the coupling and a rotor brake right here. You can see the tail rotor drive shaft up here is already connected. Uh, we've got the top baffling on here now that all got painted and installed uh everything is done on the engine compartment i even plumbed the heat system got a nice air box set up here and we've got a central heat outlet right between the rear seats so i'm hoping that works nicely um we've got oil in it i haven't turned it yet for oil pressure we're getting ready to do that here soon but the lower plugs are out so that we can do that the surefly uh, actually, I'm called Surefly, but it's the Lycoming electronic ignition system has shown up. That's all installed. Both it and the magneto are timed 25 degrees before top dead center. And then if you kind of pan out and look back here, the tail cone is permanently attached. So that was exciting. Not only was it way exciting, hopefully you can see in the camera, it actually looks pretty nice. We decided... You know, this was the first thing I painted using new paint, the uh, super flight paint. I hadn't used that before. And unfortunately, it didn't come out quite as nice as I've painted some things in the past. So we decided to scotch bright it down and get rid of a run or two, truth be told, and repainted it. And uh, just like the book says, you, uh, you know, sand it down with some scotch bright, and that third coat really, really looks nice. So... This came out real nice here and shiny. It's all installed. We've got the uh, uh, anti-torque cables here. You can see they are already set at, <laughs> the book says 45 to 50 pounds. I got them right in that range. <coughs> if you can zero in here, you can see the turnbuckle. Rather than safety wire, I like using these clips that go in the turnbuckle. So these are all set up at uh, 50 pounds each. We've got, uh, the antenna's all wired and working. Uh, tail strobe light and nav light is in fact working as well. And if you come back this way, the tail rotor is even on and all the blade angles are set. So that's pretty exciting. Oh, and I hear it was a really fast process. Uh, yeah, it took me almost five hours to actually set up the rigging such that we've got the full range of minus, I think it's 26 and a half degrees one way and uh, minus nine the other way and uh, but that's all done set up and everything is now loctited all jam nuts are tight I probably should have left the chin windows off I would have made it a lot easier and a little less time than five hours but I had to get in and work in some tight spaces but uh, anyway that's all done pretty exciting there we can come back around and see that the uh, uh, angles that hold the cowlings on I've got those painted and those are reinstalled I actually did redo the cowlings because I didn't like the way they look. So those I hope to get painted this week and get the cowl fasteners. Uh, Skybolt's supposed to deliver all the fasteners today. We're going to put on. You can see the air intake here is installed. This is all done and ready to go. When I tell you the engine's ready to run, it's ready to run, actually. And it turns out we can run it, and I will run it with the cowling off, but we can actually even hover it with the cowlings off. A number of people have done that, so I don't know what I'm going to do with that yet. Uh, and let's see. Let's move into the cockpit here. This is finally all complete. You can see uh, the instrument panel is completely done. We've got a nice knob here to control the heat. i got to make a label for it. Yeah, but that's going to be uh, electronically controlled for cabin heat from cold to hot. And then I put a real nice mixture control here. Now let's talk about that a little bit. It's a helicopter, right? So I didn't put that in there so we can lean in flight, but I always do lean these engines on the ground. It does help with plug fouling on the ground and with some full power run-ups on the ground using the mixture control, I'll be able to tell if we've got the airflow performance unit jetted properly. So uh, this is the first time I think that uh, Don at Airflow Performance 
Don Rivera, uh, we've uh, actually put together an FM 300 for a helicopter installation such as this. So we're kind of guessing on the initial jet. But uh, Don's pretty good. My guess is it's right, but uh, we'll find out. But so uh, one of the comments I want to make is you're not going to lean a helicopter in flight. You know, we do lean aircraft engines in flight. And those of you who do that know sometimes you just pull it back till the engine starts to quit and then push it forward a little bit. And that's typically peak, right? Well, you got that nice big flywheel up front called a propeller on an aircraft engine. And even though you pull it back and it might start to stumble or quit, when you push it back in, that propeller typically keeps it running. Not so much in a helicopter. We don't have that massive flywheel. We've got that little fan that you saw back there. And we've got a spray clutch between the engine and the rotor. Because if we have an engine failure, we want that rotor to immediately be disconnected so we can go into an auto rotation. So guess what happens if we lean too much in flight and that engine quits? It quits. It stops cold. It stops turning. So now you've got your hands full trying to figure out an auto rotation and get the engine restarted. Not a good scenario, not something we really want to fool around with. Okay, um, so what's left? Uh, home stretch, I've got to do the windshields. I'm actually not looking forward to those. I'm um, waiting for it to warm up a little bit. Uh, it's an afternoon kind of project. Once a hanger gets nice and warm, I did manage to crack the left one. Had these done once, so now I've got to redo them. That was not a cheap venture to get two new windshields. Although Carol is quite happy because we decided to get tinted windshields now for the front to uh, this big bubble here in the uh, southeast heat. It's, it's probably a good idea to put a tinted bubble on there. So I've got to do those. The doors have been painted. I've got actuators to put on to hold the doors in the wind. Some nice gas struts. I'll get those on. The windshield, I've got to paint the cowlings hopefully this week and then weigh the helicopter. And then we've got to rig the main, put the main rotor blades on and rig it. So fingers crossed maybe sometime in february we'll be making some noise with the engine all right anyway hopefully uh, you've enjoyed our little updates uh, we won't stop we'll take you through the rest of it weekly including the flight test program i promise